Well, this video is going to focus on how to prove triangles are congruent. The strategy for triangle proofs essentially is just a two-stepper. The first thing that you'll want to do is just identify the three congruent parts. After you've done that, then you would just simply state that the triangles are congruent by writing the triangle congruence statement. Let's look at this example here. We have two given pieces of information, X being the midpoint of segment NR, and angle A being congruent to angle G. Knowing that, please prove that the triangles are congruent. Let's first write in what we already know. We already know these two because they're given, but we also happen to know how this thing ends. Once you've proven this statement to be accurate, you don't have to go any farther. So let's remember the steps here. We want to identify the three congruent parts and then state that the triangles are congruent. So let's see what we know. Well, let's go ahead and mark this. We know angle A is congruent to angle G. And notice here the numbers 1 and 2 here. A lot of times when a proof has numbers in there, that's giving you a hint on what to focus on. In this particular case, you might notice that these two particular angles are vertical angles. And vertical angles are equal to one another. So let's go ahead and write that. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And how do we know that's true? Because those are vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent. A reminder, remember you need three pairs of congruent parts. And what we have now are two of them, this one and this one. So what we need now is one more. Keep in mind we were given this piece of information and because of that that's got to help us somewhere. What that does tell us is this. Something is equal and because it's talking about a segment chances are we're talking about two segments that are equal to one another. Think about what a midpoint does. A midpoint basically marks the halfway point in a segment so what you're being told essentially is that the distance from here to here is the same as it is from here to here. By definition, midpoints cut segments in half. Because of that, we can state unequivocally that NX is congruent to XR. And the reason is because that's just the definition of a midpoint. You can write this reason however way you want definition of midpoint works fine. You can state that point X cuts NR into two equal halves. That works fine as well as long as you're able to internalize this information here and articulate that you needed it in order to make this statement. So now we've got our three equal parts. One common mistake students make with proofs is that they don't mark on the picture and if you don't mark on the picture it's a little tough to see exactly what you have to show that these are equal. So notice that we have an angle here, an angle here, and a side. Or you can go side, angle, angle. But in any case, the side is not between the two angles, which is the main point. So angles, angle, angle, side. Sorry, let's try again. Angle, angle, side is the reason for the triangles being congruent. This next one is a little bit different. Well, we have our, a pair of congruent sides, which is already marked on the figure. But here you have that segment BD bisects an angle. OK, with this one, we're not going to do two column proof. What we'll do is we'll do flow chart. So again, let's start off with what we already know. We already know these two pieces of information. And we know they're true because they're given. We also know the triangle statement is going to go in the end. What we don't have yet are the reason. Now remember, we need three pairs of congruent parts, and we only have one here. So let's try and decipher the other two. Note that these two triangles share the same side. Because of that, we can simply identify BD as equaling to itself. Now the reason we would use for that is because of the reflexive property. By the way, if this flowchart isn't really showing any kind of form, it's because we're just still brainstorming here. We want to get all our ideas out first, and then we can establish how we want this to flow. Okay, again, you'll note that we have BD bisecting angle ABC, so we have to use that. We're talking about angles here, and notice the hint 1 and 2. So hopefully you recognize this. 
If this is a bisector, then this angle has been cut in half, which simply means this. Angle 1 has to be the same as angle 2, just because that's what a bisector does. It cuts an angle into two equal angles. Therefore, angle 1 equals angle 2. And definition of angle bisector is the reason. So now you notice we've got our three equal parts. Let's go ahead and rearrange this now. Uh, let's kind of move this out of the way for now. We're going to need to know these three congruent parts here in order to establish that the triangles are congruent. Therefore, those three flow into here. Now notice that I've kind of lined up all the three equal parts in, uh, in a row here and the triangle statement going right underneath. Now, here's the last bit here if you want to make your flow chart flow, and that is this. We are given this piece of information. This piece of information was needed to figure out which of these ideas. Well, you needed it to figure out angle 1 and angle 2 because, and this, by the way, is a big hint, definition of angle bisector. So you want an arrow flowing to here, basically stating that you needed to know this first to show this was true. So in a flow chart, it's kind of like a two-column proof in that you need to state, uh, you know, what goes first, what goes second. But some things can occur simultaneously, and that's why we have these in a row. Okay, so let's look at what we've got here. You have this pair of sides, you have this particular side here which they share and then the angle in between so that's side angle side. So that's the reason that we would use down here for the triangle congruence and that is it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.